Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of the Mental Health Gaming Podcast, or as we like to call it, Episode 53. No changes, I'm joined by Stu. How are you doing, Stu? Yeah, not too bad, I guess. Yeah, we could call it Episode 25 plus 28, maybe, just as an idea. Just to, to go all primer on it and make it as confusing as possible with numbers. I, I like to confuse the audience, it's part of my job. Yeah, it, it, the way my brain works, I could actually compartmentalise all that somehow, so, you know, it's good all good. It is. Lots to cover today, both personal, wider world, and all that kind of stuff, but we'll start off as usual. Video games, what have you been playing? I've been playing loads this week, I'll rattle through some of them quickly. Dead Cells. <laughs> no, no, done with Dead Cells now. I'll probably come back to it in the future briefly, but I, I do tend to kind of move on from those sorts of things pretty fast. So, um, mainly because in the past games were expensive and you wrung, wrung them dry, but yeah. now they're dirt cheap, so it's one and done. So, <laughs> on that one and done basis, I'm still hammering Ghost Runner, which I absolutely adore. And just to remind people, it's like a combination of Mirror's Edge and Titanfall 2, I guess. You're a cyber samurai or slash ninja running around killing people. And yeah, it's fantastic. I'm, I've got past really some really hard sections and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, when you start to get the feeling you're a unstoppable killing machine. I normally I feel like an unstoppable sex machine, but I feel like an unstoppable killing machine with him. So They have a name for people like you. Mm, yeah. Well, they normally arrest people like me. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, that's that's the first one. Still playing that one. Right. So I've been playing. Do you know? I'll let you guess. Do you know what my favourite genre of video game is? Uh I, well, I know that you love indies, but I don't actually know puzzle. I suppose it puzzle is. Game? Yes, yes. Indie is in a genre. <laughs> Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> I know some... Actually, it's worth it's worth talking about another day, but a lot of people do see indie as a genre. The amount of people that flippantly go, I don't like indie games. <laughs> no, let's just say you don't like games. Um, but, yeah, puzzle yeah. games. <laughs> yeah. I, I've long championed the idea of I really, really want to see a remaster, remake, whatever, of Panel de Pong or Tetris Attack or Planet Puzzle League, whatever you might know it by. Um, And Nintendo definitely don't seem to be behind it and won't be doing it, so that dream will not be coming. However, uh, thanks to the maker of Mixalumia, known as Dave Makes on Twitter... Um, he's part of a bundle on Steam, and he's promoting it. it includes Mixalumia, Crossing Q, uh, which I've played before, uh, which I won't talk about today because I've played it ages ago, um, and two others. And the first one is called Flip On, which is a puzzle game, and it's basically based around Panel de Pong. And whilst it's not as good as Tetris Attack, Panel de Pond, or whatever you want to call it, because that is like that is the absolute peak of what that game should be. But it's a really, really good game that fills a void. Um, So it's kind of a match free, but uses sort of like um, a well, and then you have to kind of like slide pieces left and right to create a a block of um, of three or four, and you get better scores, and it's got like puzzle modes that you've got to clear all the bits like with a certain amount of move you've got score attack modes time attack modes you've got a versus mode and it's kind of got this uh puyo puyo tetris style basic story to take you through all the different modes which is just as naff as puyo puyo tetris story in all fairness but i don't care because it's it does what it needs to do and it is it's still fun and it gets you playing the game it's out there for about a fiver, I think. It's like really, really cheap, um, but it's scratching that itch I have. And we'll, we'll come to something a bit later about this, but I, I got through my issues this week um, and I went, right, I'm playing this. I don't care what I can and can't see. I'm making sure I play this. And yeah, anyone who's got any love for Panel de Pong, Tetris Attack, Planet Puzzle League, get on this. It's on Steam. It's just over a fiver, I think. In fact, I'm going to check the actual price now. 
Oh my god, I've got that completely wrong. It's nowhere near a fiver. It's two pounds eighty nine. Hey, not bad. <laughs> so if you like Panel de Pong, Tetris Attack, get this game, support the developer, and then we can all hound him and get him to do a I hound them, I don't know who makes it actually. Hound them and get them to do a Switch version as well. But it is absolutely fantastic. Nice one. Yeah, it's it's good when you discover something in, in your favourite genre that was a, a little bit of a sleeper. And there seem to be quite a lot of them in, in the sort of itch.io and nether realms of Steam space. Yeah. So. I, kind, I kind of resisted saying spiritual successor because that, that gets thrown around a lot, but it kind of is. Well, it's a phrase for a reason. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. a, it, apt. Uh, oh, yeah, and what cool. I'll do, just to cover this before you go on to your next game uh, one I've played a little bit less of but I've really enjoyed so far um, is another game that was in that bundle and that's called Extas Extas, Extas uh, don't ask me how to pronounce it and this one is literally, so you've heard of Tetris and you've heard of Lumines Lumines, Lumines This is why it's got an awkward name to pronounce because it's taken influence from that as well. You've heard of both of those games. What this does is goes, right, okay, what happens if we just put those games together? So you've kind of got this Lumines style mechanic, but in a Tetris style well, and the beat goes down the screen instead of up. And you basically need to clear lines like you would in Tetris. It's got a kind of like funky um, electro beat music soundtrack to it, which is really good. It's two colours and it's got different skins like you'd expect in Lumines, Lumines, Lumines. And I've played very little of it so far, but what I have played, damn, I'm really enjoying this one as well. In the same bundle, which the bundle's actually really cheap is what it is. I can't remember how much the bundle is. But if you wanted to get this one separately, this one will set you back... 579 this is the one that's slightly more expensive that i've got i'm got the wrong way around but again another absolutely fantastic addition to the genre right how is it spelled right e-k-s-t-a-s-e e-k e-k what s-t a-s-e a-s-e ecstasy it's ecstasy oh spell it properly then (laughs) <laughs> game developers use proper words i get it now yeah 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 i thought when you were reading when you saying it i was like hmm i think i know where they're going with that but it is very yeah <laughs> confusing one th- one thing we know about me though is i struggle with with words which is not great for someone who talks for a living at the moment <laughs> but yeah names are things i look at it and go i'll just make that up as i go along well, that is confusing. It's a, we'll let you off, definitely, on that one. And I only just discovered I've been saying biopic wrong for, like, 40 years nearly. Oh, God. All the YouTubers get it wrong as well. Biopic. It's like... I always were... used to say biopic. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> because it was biography. You don't say biography. I see. Oh, yeah. I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Right. And no one ever corrected me. So I kept thinking, why are people saying biopic? What the hell? What is wrong with people? And then I realised I was the one getting the wrong... Well, it should be hyphenated, really. But yes, yeah, yeah. it should be. Um, but yeah, that's X stars. <laughs> Perfect, spot on. Um, <laughs> I, on that theme, before I forget, on the theme of cheapo bundles and stuff. Apparently, I heard this on the DLC podcast. Which listeners, if you've not listened to it, it's a very good gaming podcast. I highly recommend it. Um, mentioning a, a new Celeste game uh, has just dropped completely stealthily. Mm. It's Celeste 2, but uh, it's only short. But it's called Celeste Classic, I believe. And it's playable on just about anything, and it's free. And apparently it it's the, still fantastic. Built on Pico 8 or something, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yes, I want to try that. Bit of a public service announcement for people there. Did you say, sorry, how much was it? It's free, I believe. Free? Uh, I don't know if I've got... Yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, it's I mean, it's really weird. It's it's like a Celeste based game. It's probably one of those that you're happy to pay money for. So <laughs> it's it's free. So definitely get on that. I mean, yeah, you'd have to be nuts not to if you like the first one. Oh, do you know what? That could have been a perfect segue to next week's game that I was going to talk about. But 
doesn't matter now. Okay. <laughs> I've been playing a game called Nuts, but I haven't played enough of it to talk about yet. Ah, okay. Fair play. So we'll 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 re we'll resegue again next week. I like resegues. Yeah. Yes. So the next one I've been playing um is Encodia, which is a point and click. And I don't play these. I really don't play them very often at all. Do you know all. what I thought that was pronounced like? Go on. Encodja. Ah. <laughs> That's like code. Uh, yeah, so no, that makes sense. I suppose if you played it, it might make more sense for a title. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have been entirely sure, but they say it early on in the game, which I always appreciate. <laughs> yeah, tell me, that's what games need to do to, at the start, just pronounce the game. Yeah, like <laughs> in a really kind of patronising way over the opening titles, like Encode Yeah. It's Tetris. Uh. <laughs> But yeah, so I've been playing that. And yeah, I don't normally play point and click games and they're not really for me. I, I don't enjoy them very much, but I enjoyed the look of it. It's, it's very comic book styled and it's got heavy outlines, you know, like in cell shading kind of thing. But it kind of looks like a, a sort of child's book, but done in a kind of grungy aesthetic. So it looks really great. It's a, you're a, a little kid in a future Berlin where it's a little bit cyberpunky, and you're le- you're looked after by a, a helper robot. Um, your parents died, and the the robot brought you up, and you live on the streets, and you've got to kind of go through your sort of day to day tasks of just surviving. And but not it's not a harsh survival style thing. It's more of a gentle. Oh, you know, I've got to do the groceries, but my grocery list is dig through the bins kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, it, it looks lovely. Um, it controls okay. Uh, I my brain doesn't really work very well with going oh you know connect this wrench to a sticky plaster and you know an illuminated sign to achieve something I just, I'm just not bright enough so it has got a lot of the um, point and click mechanics in it then nothing but them nothing but them it's a really I mean I don't even know what the modern one's like but even I can tell it's retro it's in its in its uh, approach yeah so uh, very much a kind of just click on everything in the scene to see if anything's pick upable or anything is interactive and then combine try combining stuff with everything in the scene to try and get past the next thing so whether that's good or not I can't judge because I don't play them but it's it's very lovely looking it's worth probably taking a, a gander at if you're into that sort of stuff what's the story like in it because i've always been a big fan of almost like one boy and his robot pet whatever companion type stories they always kind of hit me quite emotionally so yeah what, what what's the story like does it is it hold the game together well uh, so far it's pretty light in terms of storytelling it's okay. done in a gentle way and it's done so that it's the world doesn't feel threatening. You don't meet anybody. Uh, the, the characters that you meet are more humorous than they are threatening, you know, and the most of them, even the ones who are sort of quote-unquote baddies, are just kind of a bit narky. So it's it's very much done in a, in a gentle, contemplative, childlike way rather than a dark, dystopian kind of a way. Oh, really? I like, I like the sound of that, actually, because we don't have enough games out there that are that don't involve the end of the world or the end of humanity in some fashion. So if one's just a bit more upbeat without being obviously upbeat, then I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, it could well be something you you enjoy, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely give that one a look when I can see again, which we'll come to later. Yeah. Um, what else have you been playing? One I want to talk about, and this is almost a bit of a plug, um for the developers um i played a 20 minute demo of this game on itch.io um, and i'll put the link down for people to be able to get to it it's currently on kickstarter in there will also be a link available for it and it's called a long journey to an uncertain end and it's kind of a visual novel stroke resource management team management kind of space opera journey type thing Um, and i don't want to say much about it because the 20 minutes i played of it were just like blew me away um for what it was trying to produce 
absolutely lovely sort of like hand drawn art style uh, that's got almost it's got almost like a hand drawn animation style to it as well. Yeah. I'm trying to think back to like the old Disney films where they had really good animation, but it looked and felt hand drawn still. Uh, whereas the modern stuff feels like it's done on computers. This feels hand drawn, and it's you know it. You kind of take on your role is this um, someone who was in an abusive relationship, and they're trying to stay one step ahead, trying to stay ahead of their abuser, and they're in their ship trying to do it. But the twist is, you are the ship. So the people you sort of bring in and help and sort of like have to resource manage and sort of like guiding you through. Now, for me, it actually felt a lot, of, um, even in the early stage I had, that it done a lot to deal with sort of certain issues that people have throughout life, both like sort of like, especially on a mental health side of things, that you are your own ship and the faults you have and the people you let in, the advice you take are your crewmates in a way. It was trying to get that through. Um, And it's very, as well, it's very LGBTQ plus positive as well. So anyone you put in the game, any character, yourself and stuff, you can choose a name and a pronoun on it, which is really, really good to see. Um, And it's just got this really sort of, even in the 20 minutes, it's got quite an emotional grip on the story without being melodramatic. But do go and check that out. I don't want to say much about it. It's on Kickstarter at the moment. If you back it early, you'll get it as a sort of a much cheaper price. Um, I don't know how many were available. Uh, Just to cover, not sponsored to say any of this. It was passed to me via a PR company. But I checked it out and yeah, I absolutely brilliant. Can't wait to see where this goes down the line. That sounds really intriguing. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to you talking about that a bit more. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. I the whole why you wouldn't put those options in, you know, the, when you're doing a character selection that are LGBTQ plus friendly, I have no idea because even the biggest bigot would just be like, well, I'm not doing that. I'm a him, um, but it includes everybody else. So I, quite the, yeah, the latest Call of Duty proved why a lot of the major AAA studios won't do it. Um, and I'm not going to call out the AAA studios for this. Um, and I'm going to kind of, I don't blame them in a way. They added a female character into Call of Duty. They had a gender neutral option. And then the bigots kicked off about it big time. Um, and so I get why some of the bigger games don't do it. But yeah, for me, it should be just something that's natural on everything. We should naturally be able to choose the pronouns on absolutely any form, any game, anything really. But hopefully, the more the, the more the indie game starts to it, hopefully the more that kicks on more into bigger games, and hopefully the more that gets further and further into society. So, you know, it's a shame it's still small, but hopefully it'll grow from there. Yeah, yeah, I could talk more on it, but for another day but yes oh yeah i really i agree i, I hopefully it will crawl upwards from the from the indie basement yeah yeah yes um but talking about kickstarter just reminded me very quickly that uh, r-type final 2 that i backed on kickstarter which felt like years ago and probably is years ago now is out in april and i'm excited about it There's not, nothing more to say than that but just that i'm excited about it so that's so, good is that a new game it like is a new yeah. R type. It is a new R type, not just like a remake or anything like that. No. It, well, there will be remake levels because they were part of the stretch goals. But that dog really doesn't like me talking about R type. Can you hear it? I can. Yeah, that's fun. He isn't was it? more of a Gallagher fan. Yeah, yeah. No, he's really <laughs> disagreeing with my stance on horizontal shooters. But um, yeah, so <laughs> I prefer uh, Defender. Damn it. <laughs> So yeah, I've just—it's it, a brand new one. Um, it was kickstarted. It's not by Irem. They've just a company. It's just a, a dev studio that's bought the license to the games. And uh, yeah, so I can't wait for that. I bought for dev studios buying licenses to old games. Yes, and then giving us the treatment they actually deserve. I know, and the, the irony being that Irem is one of the smaller companies. I, it's it, you know it was big in the eighties, somewhat in the nineties. And then really in the 2000s onwards kind of disappeared. But if you think about it, how many IP are companies like Konami sitting on? You know, not least of which is Castlevania. 
and Silent Hill and Sega. Oh my God, there's so many Sega franchises that need to be brought well, if, brought back. If if we are talking about devs buying up old licenses, if any indie devs out there want to buy up the Droplets license, please go and find it. Please get it and remake that game. I will give you the monies. Not to buy the license, I don't have the monies, but I will buy the game. You will get one sale at least. I guarantee it. I what won't a... <laughs> even ask for a review code. <laughs> what a tempting proposition. <laughs> You'll get one sale. But, You'll uh... get one guaranteed sale. But yeah, no, your droplets obsession is well known. Um, I really every night when I go to bed, I I pray that it will get get a remaster or a remake. But to know, pray to our Lord Gabe. That's it. That yeah, <laughs> Gabe Newell, still God. But um, uh, yeah, on the uh, all our type stuff aside, and all please bring back games we like aside, I've been playing a game that has brought back a game that I like, which is. Final Fight LNS Ultimate. It's a mouthful, but that's because it's a, a ROM hack. So, right. for those not aware, a ROM hack is where you just take an existing game and you alter the code to add stuff to it, or subtract, but mostly add. And this one is Final Fight, but with loads of levels stitched together from all of the games, of which there are many, you might be surprised to hear, and loads of characters from Capcom games. So, you start off with all of the Final Fight characters from across all the games and loads of Street Fighter characters as well. And the game has special moves. It has a parry system. It ha- You know, you use fireball motions and stuff like that. And you can choose how difficult it is with how many characters are on screen. It's in widescreen, not four by three. And it's really great. It's it's really bloody hard, but it's really great game. Um, being able, like Vega, is my favourite character in Street Fighter, and yeah. being able to use him in this and use all his special moves and just ruin people is oh, it's just fantastic. So if you're into beat 'em ups, it's completely free. Just Google it. It's Final Fight LNS Ultimate, and yeah, it's it's really fantastic. I've never understood the legality of a ROM hack. Um, because theoretically they shouldn't be allowed, and I, I'm glad they exist, but they seem to sort of skirt this thing. Even Nintendo don't mind them because you've got this whole sort of like the Super Kaizo Mario stuff that done the rounds for years before. Obviously, we got Super Mario Maker too. Uh, Super Mario Maker came about. They was about. They've been officially entered into speed run records and and things like that. And it's just kind of like, I've, everything about it kind of skirts around that developers, publishers, everything would be going, no, no, you cannot do that. And Nintendo would be shutting it all down and Konami would shut it all down. But they're happy for them to be out there. And I'm just, I'm, I'm glad, I'm so glad that they turn a blind eye to them. Yeah, my understanding is that they're copying George Lucas's model, which is as long as what you produce isn't, sold so there's it's always free and there's no profit involved then that's fine um you're allowed to distribute it and i think the reason the other companies like nintendo have uh, do it do it as well is because it promotes and keeps their ip in the public eye for free uh and keeps people engaging with it where and they and other people aren't making money off it so it's a win-win for them because you know they're not doing the work they're not losing money but they're also getting free promotion. And I think that's probably... I mean, if they wanted to, to sue them, they could shut them down in seconds. Yeah, yeah. But it just, it, it just uh, benefits them. I think they've, they've worked out more than it, uh, it harms them. Honestly, I mean, unless anyone can tell me different, I was pleasantly surprised when Nintendo didn't shut down Kaizo Mario when Mario Maker came out. I was really surprised yes. in a really pleasant way. Yeah, it's different when it's a dead IP, but when it's something that's very active and when yeah. there's an idea coming forward that's, you know, uh, along the same lines, like with Kaizo and, and Mario Maker. Yeah, it's a surprise, but a, a pleasant one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've got plenty of other games, but I'm not going to talk about it because they're odds and ends games, but I will I will pick those up in, in coming weeks. But so I assume you're done with Games Talk. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I keep meaning to talk about like all the modding that I've done. 
So, I'll, but I will save that for, a, we'll have a, a special chat about that maybe next week. Um, but yeah, just to let everyone know that I've been doing lots of modding of old consoles and that means testing them and testing them means playing their games. So I've touched on quite a few games that are worth chatting about and my experiences with the hardware. So yeah, we'll go over that at some point. But for today, yeah, that's me done. Yeah, no, definitely. We talk about the modding stuff because there's, I think there's... Um some benefits again to mental health with the body inside of stuff and the um euphoria you could get from sort of like repairing something that's broken and old so yeah, I'd be, yeah. It, we'll, we'll definitely have a talk about that i think we'll go for next week we'll have a good talk about that one yes but this week a couple of things i want to touch on one is definitely on a personal level and i'll come to that after one is on what's happening in the world both positive and infuriatingly negative um the first one is do you know you was always told like oh you shouldn't be petty being petty is it's really it's a really bad look it's not good for you and stuff like that yeah yeah i disagree because who didn't have a laugh when the rich wall street types got absolutely screwed over by a bunch of redditors with names such as Your Dad's Hard. Who didn't laugh at that? Yeah. And go, do you know what? Screw you guys. Now you got to know what it was like for once. And the, the lid has been lifted to know that the economy is bull****. Um, I think I've said this before on the podcast many times. So I think economy is bull****. And it's just a made up thing. The free market isn't free. Because as soon as people started making money from it. They shut it down. And went, no, you can't come into our, our club that's for everyone, but only for certain types of people. Um, we're, we're not saying you're not allowed. We'd just rather you wasn't in here and we'll make it very difficult for you to get in. But yeah, no. So I had a few petty laughs over that one. And why not? <laughs> but on the flip side, I know. But on the flip side of that, what has been really upsetting is those in the UK will, will know this. If you're further, further afield, then you'll need to maybe Google him. Um, but Captain Sir Tom Moore um, passed away from COVID, which is which is sad in and of itself. But what's really sort of like dispiriting to me is that people are forgetting, or seem to be put in his life above the hundred odd thousand other people who have died in this country as a thing to mourn and celebrate or to, like to mourn and then celebrate his life more than anyone else and that's really sad to me that we're doing this like we're going to do oh we're going to do another clap or we're going to do this or we're going to celebrate him in some way but what about all those others that have passed away are their lives not worth as much yeah um and it's no attack on him no attack on him no attack on his family um, and it's, I, I, you know, I, I feel for them. I really do. I feel for anyone that's died in this. But imagine being the families of uh, one of the nameless 100,000 others that have died and not being celebrated or mourned in the same way. That is, that is really upsetting to me. Yeah, there's a very dark undertone to it all. And it's something that I, I learned. I've learned a lot about fascism over the last few mm. years, unsurprisingly. A lot that I didn't know. And one of those was that right-wing ideologies and fascist ideologies promote the idea of heroes. Uh, yes. And, of course, when you say the word hero, it immediately has a positive connotation. But there's actually a negative one that's a, a dark flip side to it. And that's that... A, a hero in right-wing ideology is somebody who sacrifices themselves for the cause and that they don't have individuality or personality uh, and that they don't have their own autonomy and they don't have any value other than what they have to the state. So it's almost like, you know, sacrificing a slave to something. Yes. And that's kind of the position that they initially put Tom in and that the public picked up and ran with. So he was a hero for doing the sponsored stuff and the charitable stuff, and was a totemic figure, e even though the gathering the money meant nothing in real terms, because it was going towards an institution that made that much money, or used that much money in a day. So 
giving it to something that genuinely needed the money would have been a, a real proper positive statement. It would have actually made a critical difference to people's lives rather than be a totemic thing. And as I'm saying this, I know people are going to be hating on me, but I'm sorry, you know, just speaking speaking the truth as I see it. Yeah. And now that he's died, that's the perfect hero journey for him. For, again, I'm not criticising him just like you're not. I'm criticising the people who are turning it into a totem of, yes, you should uh, make money, you should break yourself to make money for people that aren't you yeah. and that are institutions. And secondly, when you die, you've died heroically for a cause, even if that cause is essentially for nothing. Yeah. So in my worldview, Tom should either have not raised that money or should have raised it for a local cause. And then secondly, he should have stayed completely isolated because he's an old man. But of course, yeah. you don't you don't can't turn that into an exciting narrative that makes people feel better about themselves, even though it's based on a lie. Yeah. Uh, whenever I I, mean, I I would bring up the Do you know what? It's great he's done this. But what the hell is wrong with us that he's having to do this? Why are we celebrating him raising this money rather than asking the question, why is he having to raise this money? Yeah. Um, why is he being allowed to do this? And uh, you'd often get the attack, well, you not support what he does, you not this is not a good thing that he's doing. Well, no, I'm not saying that. Whatever he does, brilliant, brilliant that he's got off you know, got up and done that. But we're asking a nigh on a hundred year old man at the time to walk laps on his garden to raise money for a service that should be funded fully, especially during the time of a pandemic. So, no, I'm not going to celebrate it. I will applaud him for what he did, but I'm not going to celebrate it because it's allowing our government to get away with complete mismanagement of not only the now, but the past. Um, And if anyone wants what what Stu was just talking about previously and the way he was putting that together, if you want to see a modern bit of fiction that covers this so well and gets it almost on the nose, then I do suggest you get Amazon Prime. Unfortunately, it means giving money to Jeff Bezos, but get Amazon Prime and watch The Boys because that covers the use of heroism in fascism so, so well. It is so on the nose. And the second you started talking about that view of it, my thought went, yeah, that that sounds exactly like how they use um, superheroes in The Boys. Yeah, yeah. I would also, in terms of fiction, recommend reading the book of Forrest Gump. Yes, I read I read the book before seeing the film, and then I saw the film. I was like, "Oh my god, that's terrible!" Uh, not the film itself isn't terrible, but the misinterpretation of the book, because the book is exactly that. It's exactly this. It's that somebody does stuff inexplicably and you know possibly because of mental health issues and people decide to turn them into a cause celebre when they're not you know and it's promoted by the establishment because it mis- yeah. it's a misdirect uh, like just like all those things you see on tv of like oh you know auntie nora has been knitting hats with nhs on them for post boxes and it's like yeah fine but you should be talking about thousands of people dying every day in the hospitals and you're not yeah. and this is what the government want so yeah yeah it's not news anymore. The, you know, 1,400 dead was down from 1,600 um, this time last week. And that, you know, it's almost the point, well, it's going down, though it's still 1,400 too many. Yeah. Everyone's still talking about it's getting back to normal or oh, the vaccine's going to be the answer. The vaccine's not going to be the answer if the government aren't still trying to keep people, as much as we hate it, locked down to stop it spreading. Because the vaccine will only be the answer if we stop allowing this to spread and mutate. Because the more it mutates, the less effective that vaccine's going to be. Yeah, and the reason that we're in such a, a harsh and long lockdown is because they didn't do lockdown when they should, in which case it would yeah. have been two weeks and done. And then if reached a stage where it was bad again, then another two weeks at a later point, rather than months and months. So, yeah. But, I mean... But I think you know we haven't gone on about on, we haven't gone on about this for a long time, no. and it's all coming out. Uh, so I hope people can stick with us on it. But yeah, no, it's but really w- what gets me is the celebration of the vaccine and the way the government of we're, we're the top cu- country in Europe for um, giving out vaccines. 
yeah, that's all well and good, but everything else, it's, it's, like, it's like turning around and finding out that when Hitler killed all the Jews, he managed to wipe out polio at the same time and go, well, do you know what? He managed to get rid of polio, so it's not all bad what he'd done before. Yeah. It's, 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 you can't you can't go, well, yeah, we're doing well at vaccines, so do you know what? Everything's all good now. We, the Brits are the best. Um, don't get me wrong, the EU, the way they acted initially was... Yeah, yeah, it's very hard to sort of like back them on that because that withholding and making childish threats doesn't is not a good look. But that's what Britain's been doing for the past four years with Brexit. So the second the EU do it, everyone's going, oh, no, look at them, look at them. Oh, that's so childish. No, behave. Everything has been mismanaged this last year or so. One positive out of it doesn't negate the shit show that it's been previously. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, people are predisposed to want things to be binary. I've talked about it loads on the podcast that, that they want it to be things to be yes and no, black and white. But life isn't like that. And you've got to grow up and be mature about it and understand that, yes, you know, we are a terrible country, but we do some good things occasionally. And the EU is a great institution, but it f- messes up now and again occasionally yeah yeah and you you have to understand because that's the world and people just want to live in a fantasy version where you just flick a switch and things change and unfortunately yeah. that's not the case but there we go nope so to take it to personal matters for a bit i i've been suffering this last week with my vision and i've got just so people are aware i know a lot of people listening to this know this i've got Pretty much zero vision in my left eye while I wait for an operation to reattach my retina. And I keep getting bleeds on my right eye, which means every now and again I have nigh on no vision. I can see out my right eye, but everything's blurry. It's it's almost like Nintendo 64 vision, uh, but with extra Vaseline spread across everything. Oh, that's bad. (laughs) I know. Everything looks really blocky, honestly. But yeah, so... It, it got really frustrated. It, it kind of had a, a, a both a positive and negative effect on my mental health. So negatively, I was struggling to play games, watch TV, could definitely couldn't read words on the phone or a book or anything like that, uh, which was really frustrating because someone gifted me a book about mental health in football, uh, which I really, really want to read. Can't read that at the moment, even though my sight is improving, still reading words is, is a bit of a struggle. So I have to get onto my computer. I've had to turn every website onto a dark mode, false dark mode, which means it looks like I'm reading the internet in some kind of like early 2000s custom Windows job that you used to be able to get. Everything's like sort of mm. garish colours on black backgrounds at the moment. Yeah. Um, but it's sort of like, it's sort of like, oh, I can't do the things I really enjoy and I'm kind of like, sort of like really down the dumps. But at the same time, this time it's kind of kick-started me a bit more into sort of like wanting to sort of go that I've I, now I've got to do something about it I can't I can't let this carry on because the next time I could go completely blind and that would be that um so kicked in sort of like I know this should sound like it's something obvious to do um but for many different reasons it hasn't been but making sure I'm taking my insulin three times a day properly that I'm sort of like definitely on top of my um, my meds for my mental health because um, I had been skipping the odd day, not on purpose, just accidentally, and then going, oh, that doesn't matter. And try to do more just to sort of like plan for being healthy. Um, so, you know, again, try now to cut out the, the extra snacks on the whole, um, the fizzy drink and stuff like that try to sort of like really push because it's got to the point where i'm going look if i carry on down this road what have i got if i'm just sitting here with absolutely no vision whatsoever then what sort of life am i gonna have um and then the thought of not being able to actually see my kids that was sort of like yeah no this isn't good um really? it's <laughs> my partner's just gone really I think she said you're paid to not be able to see him. <laughs> um, but it's. Do you remember? Have you, have you you've seen the Black Mirrors, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've seen all of them. Yeah. I can't remember what one it is, but the one where there's a program you get where you can actually make your face blurry to people you don't want to see you. I can't remember what 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 that one was called. What that episode was. It was um... one where sort of like 
you can sort of like block block your face so you can't um, people like you can block people in real life like you can on like forums. Oh and, uh, yeah, it was internet. White Christmas, wasn't it? Uh, the one with John Ham. His yes. his punishment is that nobody can see his face. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But White when Christmas. but the way my vision had got it was like that, so I could see like outlines of people, but everything was like any detail was completely gone, and it was like no, this isn't. This isn't good. But then you get the feelings of guilt starting to, to come in. So look, the guilt of like, I'm letting my family down, I'm letting my kids down. But then also the, well, I've taken on like code to sort of like write and cover games about. And it's like, I'm letting other people down. And it's that starts to get to you as well. And so it's uh, kind of really sort of like, you get sort of like this up and down on your mental health with stuff like that. And it's just, it's really sort of like tough to get a grip on you're just so up and down constantly with it yeah it's it's good that you had that kind of moment of realization though that yeah yeah it can be really hard can't it to to have that i think i think when you exist um and again i suppose with this all fits into sort of like the last year that we've all been having where everyone's life is kind of on hold at the moment so you're kind of like constantly planning for down the line um, so it'll be looking like, oh, you know, once lockdown's over, I'm going to start doing this to improve improve myself or improve our lives in whatever way I can. But I can't do that at the moment because of lockdown. I've started to do that with my health because of my, I've had my foot in um, in a cast as well um, for my heel to heal. Yeah. And things like that. And like the weights come on. It's like, well, once all this is all sorted, I'll start. I'll, that's when I'll start doing it. Um but it was, I think, the fact that I've been having to sit around a lot more, not been able to move about as much, has probably exacerbated the other issues, the other health issues. Yeah. Um, and that has that kind of now got. Whereas before, I've been able to do other stuff, so it's maybe kept everything slightly at bay. It's almost like my body's starting to now go, and well, I'll give up now. And that has been the kick up the ass. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, one of the reasons I'm saying it so it goes publicly is if I start to slip again, I can be piled upon. <laughs> I don't think anyone would do that though. Is you are very well liked, <laughs> but, but it should be. It should. Be, it should be. And this is. Um, this has got right. This is going to come across wrong, but I hope it comes across right. Uh, people can't tell the difference between critiquing someone for their benefit and shaming them and there is a difference so when we look at body shaming if you're a doctor and you tell them that look, you need to get fit you need to start doing this to improve your to, to lose weight to improve your body shape you're not saying to them that look i despise you like this or you're not being horrible for them for the sake of being horrible for them you're saying that this is not good for you this is not good for your health wise it can't be good for your self-esteem so this is we're trying to support you here. Obviously turning around to someone and mocking them for being fat. That's not helpful to anyone. There is a difference between being nasty to somebody and body shaming them for fun or body shaming someone for their own benefit. So, you know, if someone if like you know, I would say to anyone who's listening now, if you hear of me going back down a road where, you know, I'm talking about my blind I'm going blind again or I'm getting sores on my foot that need that need um, hospital help again, um, or weights piling on pile on on me because I need that to kick on. It's how you do it and where it comes from, and people struggle to tell the difference. I think I think we are too afraid to speak truths to people sometimes because of the reactions there will be. But it's okay to give someone the truth because sometimes they need it to get the kick up the. Uh, my partner will do it. She will tell me what like. When I can be super down in the dumps or really depressed at a point, you often hear that you can't just tell someone to cheer up. And that is true. But sometimes you need that kick up the from someone close to you to go snap out of this. Wherever you're going at the moment, stop. Get out of this bit and start going on a different road. And that could be a guy just cheer the f up for once. It's not saying I'll just cheer up and that'll fix it, but it's those little moments that you need that will change a path that you're on, whether that be your physical health, your mental health or whatever. You do need that and people need to learn the difference between doing it because you despise someone or you're doing it for hatred or for laughs and doing it because you care for somebody or you want them to be better. Yeah, 
I, I think the key there is trust. You know, you only accept yeah. those things from from people you trust. But when you do, you that that can be a real a real help. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, trust is one hundred percent. And I can look back at when I'm when I'm on a good path, and I can look back logically and stuff like that. I know like the pressure I'm putting on my family, and. But what's really strange is what you've got to do is when you then look back and you look at the pressure you put on your family, you start all the time to go, Jesus Christ, I was horrible. That, that, that can't have been good for them. And you've got to that, take that moment to also tell yourself, that actually, no, just remember that's how bad it was. Don't let that drag you back down thinking about how it was. Yeah. As I said, I will, you know, if it wasn't for, um, I will always like be thankful to my kids and my kids to help keep me around. You know, my love and wanting to see them. Um, grow up and wanting to be around them sort of, but if it wasn't for my partner I'd have been dead a long time ago I know that 100% yeah she has kept me going for for, for the you know we've been together sort of like over 15 years now and she has kept me going at times and you know I, I will ever forever be grateful for that but she will speak truths you know I would say the people who listen to this know me to a degree and feel free to tell me you know you know i've been on things where i've spent too much on things or i've been sort of like i'll look at and go i want this game i want this game i want this game and um steve will often set, turn around and just go you've got way too many games as it is are you sure you really need another one and he will do it in a mocking way but uh, you can know that's coming from it brad calm it down a bit yeah you know, it's, it's coming from a good place. And you're right, it's that level of trust that you need with people. And it shows that people do care. But don't be afraid to actually tell people truths. Just just be careful how you word it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for me this week. Although I didn't get to say much because Stu is always talking. <laughs> always. <laughs> I'm disgraceful, just... aren't I? I know, I know. But no, um, that, that's it. Again, uh, thank you for, for listening but I'm going to pass over to Stu to see us out because we've got more numbers when you get these nice sultry tones seeing us out. Sultry. Oh, that's bizarre. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, so again, thanks for listening. And hopefully, as per what I said last week, your weeks are getting slightly easier as things go on. Uh, Let's hope that we're not too far away from getting outside of lockdown now and that the numbers will keep going down that's what we want in the meantime obviously you can just listen to us to help you get through join our discord if you'd like to chat with people about any topic if you want to support us financially you can do that via patreon or via coffee we do a lot of content on twitter there's loads of reviews on the site and there's tons of stuff on youtube so just go onto all the socials and you'll no doubt see us poking around other than that take care of yourselves and stay safe 